Hello, my name is Dr. Jody Rummer. I'm a professor of marine biology at James Cook University in Townsville, Australia. Along with my colleague and collaborator, Joel Gayford from Cambridge University in the UK, we've been discussing the state of tonic immobility. Tonic immobility refers to a temporary unlearned state of immobility, which has been documented in a wide range of taxa. Although it's been documented in humans, it's probably best known in sharks and their relatives, such as the rays and skates and chimeras, collectively known as the chondrichthians. Tonic immobility is commonly used as a technique in animal husbandry and to carry out surgical research procedures. It happens when the species is inverted dorsoventrally, resulting in a so-called limp response where the individual enters a trance-like state associated with heavy rhythmic breathing. Induction of tonic immobility is often used by researchers as an alternative to sedatives and anesthetic, and particularly when attaching satellite tags. The following details the methodology for determining and assessing tonic immobility in chondrichthian species, the sharks, skates, rays, and chimeras. So step one, we have to restrain the individual and invert them dorsoventrally, meaning turn them upside down as quickly and gently as possible. We wanna keep the individual submerged in the water. We're doing this procedure on the epaulette shark, Hemicillium ocelotum, that is endemic to the Great Barrier Reef. Now, this species is known to not undergo tonic immobility, but we're gonna do this procedure regardless. We're gonna place one hand at the caudal peduncle and the other hand just above the pectoral fins. So we're measuring the time that's elapsed until the limb response is observed. And as I mentioned, this species does not go into tonic immobility. Now, if the limb response is observed, we're going to release the individual, but we're not going to reinvert them. And we're gonna measure the time that it takes for that individual to regain mobility or until five minutes have passed. That would be when the individual would be manually re-inverted. If the limp response is not induced, as we see here, we're going to re-invert and release the individual, allow it to move freely for one minute, and then we're going to repeat steps one through four. We're going to keep repeating step five until that limp response is induced or until the individual has been tested a total of three times. Now, this limp response is a change in muscle tone that occurs during tonic immobility. The limp response can be recognized by a complete cessation of struggling and a deep rhythmic breathing pattern. Obviously, that's not what we see with the epaulette shark because the epaulette shark does not go into tonic immobility. It's best to record this procedure in video format, either using a smartphone or a camera like a GoPro, so that these times can be verified. Along with these step-by-step -step practices for this procedure, it's also important for us to cite that we adhere to the Australian Code for the Care and Use of Animals for Scientific Purposes and Associated Legislation. This may in some cases be different than the codes or legislation at other organizations. Thank you.